Oh, that doesn't surprise me. We're they're on the edge right there. There's like six sides sitting in the uh, grass. Huh. All says no parking signs. Like drivers are ripping out the no parking signs. But it says uh, on the door now you're supposed to check in at door 26. Right over oh, here. Oh, right over here where. Pretty much right behind the truck. But still locked. No one's there. Yeah, wherever those stairs are at, I think, right? Yeah, the person that, that where the stairs go in between doors 26 yeah, and 20. That door's called 25. That's personnel door 25. Personnel door 26 over here. Oh, they're numbered differently for well, the personnel doors. The, uh, doors you actually back in. Okay, so where I see like the fire alarm thing or whatever that is over the top I of your trailer. I just went there to check it locked. Okay. They said, uh, security said sevens when they usually get here. So it's kind of hard to tell. Alright. I think you, you got a shield on your truck. Oh, yeah, the veteran thing? Yeah. Yeah. They won't give me mine. Why not? You got to prove that you're a veteran. Yeah, you, yeah your DD 214? I don't, I have my, uh, my car, uh, still have my guard because I, how I got processed now, my DD 214's in limbo. Uh -huh. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, any, uh, anything like your VA card or DD 214 or uh, military cat card or anything. Yeah, I, was like, I, I was in the military with, with John Krishner. They had to get me home every month, month for drill. My government, my military government ID card. Oh, you got your, yeah, that's your pink one, isn't it, or? Huh? Is that the... No, that's my actual military ID card. Explain. Yeah, that's the old one. That's what, I think they were green or something. Uh, yeah, it's expired, but I, I'm waiting on to get my DD-214. Ah. Uh, I don't have it because how I was processed out was during COVID, so I wasn't properly processed out. So the government's withholding my DD-214. Oh, so wait, so you separated because of the COVID thing? Huh? So you separated because I'm of separated COVID? separated because of injuries. Oh. I abstained from um, doing, a, um, I went to Costco and they asked uh, John Krishner if they could throw uh, toilet paper on my trailer and I took toilet paper over to a Costco store in the LA and they announced that the last truck paper got there. I got ripped out of the trailer and injured my back and, and, and I had a, a trauma, a level two trauma to my head. Because uh. of how severe of a uh, trauma I had to my head and my neck, my back, that was, uh, I was going to be dishonorably discharged out of the army for being hurt at my civilian job and my, uh, the uh, retired command sergeant major out of the VA plus my commander, they processed me out because my contract expired in April, but the government was holding on to me with no contract. So they're like, you, you need to go to drill. I don't have a contract. My contract expired in April. I got, I got only discharged out in July. My contract expired in April, and now the government doesn't want to recognize any any of the stuff on my DD-214, stating that I don't, they uh, come from the Pentagon saying, I don't have a DD-214, I was never in service. Well, uh, when they put, he, uh, say, my command sergeant major, he knows I've been in service because he was in my unit the entire 12 years I was in the unit. Quick, okay, question. Uh, was all your was any of your service active duty time or was it all was guard reserve or what? Uh, I was act, I had active what's called instant in country deployment. I had I was on three humanitarian aid deployments, 
but never deployed overseas. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was like part of the reserves, but on a reserve deployment. Yeah, but were, were you, so you were in a reserve unit your entire career? Yeah. Oh, that explains it. Okay, so, yeah, so you have, uh, I don't know if you guys on the Army have uh, PCARS reports. Because, yeah, with the Air Force, because I was both active duty and reserve. I, I was active duty for four years, and then I did 16 years reserve. Um, the only time the reserve gives you a DD-214 is if you did, like, an activation of some sort, uh, like your active duty orders of some sort, and then you would go to the MPF, or I, I guess you call it MPO or whatever you call it in the Army. Yeah. And... Uh, and tell them you want uh, DD-214 for that particular time that you did that active service. Yeah, but still, you're still supposed to have a, still a DD-214 with why you were in service just so many years that you served. Yeah, Guard, guard Reserve, they don't do that unless you have, uh, unless you actually had like active duty orders that you served on and yeah, like let's say you were a uh, Activated for an hour, for a year or two, whatever it was, or if you uh, even like, like actually, there were some where I went on deployments where we were gone for like, we were on three month long orders. Then I could get a 214 for that, but I, I didn't, I never really got one for those because I never really needed one because I already had one for my active duty service anyway. But, but uh, so I was, uh, I was in state, I was in country deployed, I was deployed up in the Pentagon. I, I spent, uh, Nine months there, I was up there. I I was up there during 2004. Then I was stationed up there when we had the uh, Boston bomber, and I held a 12-year-old girl who didn't want to be left alone. Her mother was already dead, and I held her until she passed away because her injuries were so bad from the bomb. And then I was stationed in Fort uh, Lauderdale, Florida. I was down there for three years doing the uh, shipping containers and everything. That's how I became a truck driver because uh, sitting there and I fired SWIP and I fired steering on hauling any more military freight because they were late every fucking time. So I got rid of them. Uh. I was the guy. I was the person to call the yeah, you're, you're no longer pulling in our military load for us. <laughs> and then um, the uh, and then then I went to Kuwait when they had that tsunami over there in the in the Philippines. I was I was over there for uh, six months on a humanitarian aid mission. Uh, I was in Antarctica. Uh, popped the ice drills and then got stuck there because they were flying out all their special equipment first and then the storm came in early me a doctor and a uh, and a nurse out of the uh, on the side like we got stuck on Antarctica and we had to wait out the storm which was which we were stuck there for a full year <laughs> goofing off because we couldn't do shit then, uh, I, then I went to Alaska on a military aid up there for three days, and then I did five different uh, Honduras missions that were only like uh, 60 to 90 days. Yeah, but any of those, because uh, you, you were on activation orders of some sort for those. I, had, well, I, I was saying I had, I had orders and I was paid, but now they're stating that, now they're stating because of the how the Obama Obama thing, they they said the uh, when Obama passed the thing for service, we only can count on war zones. No, that's not true. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, but that's the problem. There, they went off saying, "Oh, you have no actual active duty deployment." No, so that... I, I had uh, military aid deployments. I was deployed on this because I was part of a medical unit. I'm not a infantry guy. So that that's not true because I I I served in t during the uh, the entirety of Obama's term, and that was that was that, I know for sure that's not true. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna say that's that's how they that's how they're looking at my at my service. Like I had 
I was never deployed. Doesn't matter if you're on activation orders of any kind, even if it's in country, it still yeah, counts as active duty well, time. The same, but the orders how it's put it's like the humanitarian aid don't count towards retirement. And that's been that's been a real hot topic in the um, in the reserve side, especially with the doctors and all that, that every time we go on a humanitarian aid uh, service that they're saying that, oh, they're like, we're trying to get, hey, we need doctors. Well, the doctors don't want to go because you're not honoring these humanitarian aid service as part of their retirement. Because they're saying it's not a deployment. You're not being, act, you're not being activated by the big army. You're just being, uh, you're like what you call, we're just being activated for humanitarian aid, meaning uh, the Red Cross needed some extra help, and they uh, grabbed some, grabbed some soldiers and stuff to help aid in the Red Cross because the Red Cross is a federal uh, thing. Uh, Red Cross is separate from the Army. Correct. But Red Cross does use Army personnel to run the when they have a, a big natural disaster. Well, they're trying to say that's not considered deployment, and all my missions I was on were freaking a military aid mission and then when I was in state in country deployment that's how they put me because uh, uh, if I was on active duty as an active duty I would have counted those as being act an active duty soldier and they didn't want to pay me uh, $5,000 a month they only want to pay me $3,000 a month as a deployed, so you, there's there's a different. If I if they put me on active duty, they had to provide uh, a clothing allowance and all that stuff and money to live while I'm on uh, act while I'm on a base. Correct. So they didn't want. So the military got a, how they got around and not pay. They got a lot of reservists to do active duty jobs. But put them on what's called in in country deployment, and so they only paid us as we're on a deployment status. So we didn't get the same benefits as a active duty member does. Well, reserves you don't have to have the clothing allowance because they issue you them for free. Oh, shit. Yeah, I 
Listen, I got I got my honorable discharge papers, but when they gave those to me, I didn't get a CD 10, uh, 1099. And you have to have that to get your veteran benefits. Because uh, 1099 is what tells the VA what type of benefits you're eligible for. So that's, I think, the that's my issue. I just don't have a 1099 right now. Oh, uh, okay. And I tried to, I showed that to the DMV uh, when I was getting my license renewed, uh, my uh, the auto discharge papers, and they wouldn't put a veteran on my license without the 1099. It's like, no, we need your 1099. I'm like, no, I don't have one. They're like, if you don't have a 1099, then you never served in the Army. But I have a, I have an honorable discharge paid for orders. You don't have to have a 1099. You can have a 214, a retirement order, or anything else. Yeah, I was saying, I, the paperwork I have in my email, I got an email copy of it. They never gave me a physical copy. But my email copy is uh, it's my honorable discharge papers. But there was no 1099 added to it. So, uh, what's the uh, honorable discharge orders? What's that called? It's just uh, your DD-214. It shows you right there on your DD-214 what your uh, yeah, what kind of discharge. I do have a, I have a unclassified document that says that I served in the Army. Uh, I'm going to have to look at that and see if I can find it. For Guard Reserve, I'm not really sure because I retired and I got an actual retirement order. stupid.